Well, hello, my name is Jim Royal. I am a huge Beatles and Elvis Presley fan and basically classic rock in general. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If you can do a thumbs up, that's always most appreciated. Feel free to leave comments. I always enjoy reading them and I do my best to try to respond in a timely manner. Today what I wanted to do is review a classic solo Beatle album. This one comes from George Harrison. It's called The Best of George Harrison. Uh, it was originally released on uh, November 8th of 1976 and it was released here in the States on Capitol and then in the UK on the EMI label. Uh, there was a single that was issued uh, from it, uh, re-releasing My Sweet Lord on December 24th, 1976. Uh, the album runs 45 minutes in length and it, when it did get on the charts it got up to number 31 as high as number 31 on the Billboard album charts here in the States. Uh, it eventually would go gold. Uh, it was a steady seller uh, by February of 77. Uh, unfortunately, it failed to place in the top uh, British uh, album charts for the top 60. Uh, later, it was issued on CD in 1987 uh, with the original British cover artwork, which would be this. And there's some controversy on here uh, between fans, with fans and critics. Uh, this encompasses material uh, from the Beatle days up through the first five years of his solo period, so 1965 through 1975. Uh, and many people are not happy with this album in the sense that they felt that uh, George deserved to have a full album of solo material, best of, instead of half, and half of it being him with the Beatles. Let me give you an example of what's on here, okay? So, the album starts out with something from Abbey Road. Uh, then you have If I Needed Someone from Rubber Soul. Then Here Comes the Sun from Abbey Road. Then you have Taxman uh, from Revolver and then you have Think For Yourself from Rubber Soul, then you have For You Blue from Let It Be, and then you have While My Guitar Gently Weeps from the White Album. Alright, so those seven songs are original Beatle recordings with George Harrison uh, singing lead. And then you have his solo stuff, uh, and it's abbreviated, you know, there's other material that people felt that should have also gone on here besides just these six. But to me, these are like the bigger six. So you've got My Sweet Lord, uh, and that was from 1970's All Things Must Pass, uh, one of his biggest hits. Then you have Give Me Love, Give Me Peace on Earth, and that is from 1973's Living in the Material World. Then you have You, a uh, wonderful song from 1975's Extra Texture, Read All About It. Then you have the standalone single uh, from 1971, uh, Bangladesh, which was a charity uh, that he would have a concert, Madison Square Garden. He would two, two performances, August 1st, 1971, in New York, and uh, it was to help aid victims in Bangladesh. Wonderful tune. And then song number 12 is Dark Horse from 1974's Dark Horse. And then finally, you have uh, What is Life, uh, 1970's All Things Must Pass. Okay, so you've got a nice 45 minutes of George Harrison either way. Uh, for me, this was my introduction to solo George, okay, even though half of it was Beatles. Uh, and I liked it. It was almost like getting your feet wet, so to speak, uh, getting a, a sample of George's later period. And I didn't have a problem with that, and I don't have a problem with it now. Okay, there are other best ofs, but I can understand why people feel the way that they do. Let me show you uh, the artwork for it, okay? Uh, so this is the U.S. artwork on Capitol, and this was without any help from George Harrison. Um, they just didn't want to take any of his suggestions whatsoever. Here's George. It looks like he's almost in a spaceship, right? <laughs> and then uh, here's the back. George in the cosmos. Okay. And then I'm going to show you the vinyl here. Let me show you the inner sleeve first. 
Ah, young George in the cosmos. See that? And you've got the track listings at the bottom. And then you've got the vinyl right here. There you go. And look at that 1970s uh, capital vinyl at the top. Okay, and then the back side. It's just like it. All right. This was later uh, issued in 1987 on CD, uh, and when it was, it uh, gave us the British artwork. So I'm going to show you the original British artwork right here. And coincidentally, when I bought the cassette in 1983, um, this is the cover that I had. So I don't know if I get an import of it or what, but anyway, pretty cool picture. This is my favorite picture. Uh, of the two. I just like it. I'm used to it. Here's the back side. And as you can see there, there's an error here. There should be a number eight in front of my sweet lord and it's not there. I always thought that was interesting. Looking at the inside. Here you've got this. Pretty cool. And then this is a picture of George from January 1976. Him on a beach in France. He had gone to a music trade show. Okay. All right. So, what are some of the reasons possibly that this was done the way that it was? Uh, why did they have the, the Beatle material on the first half and why couldn't they have all solo? All right, these are just some ideas that I had. Well, this is my opinion. I'm thinking that uh, what was going, what was happening at this time, why they released it when they did, is January 77, the Beatles contracts were expiring. So uh, they needed to get these best ofs out if they were gonna release any material. This is kind of a not a good thing, is that it was also competing with a new George Harrison solo album. George had left the label and he was with Warner Brothers now. And in fact, just a few weeks later on November 19th, 1976, he released 33 and a third. And you better believe it, unfortunately, sales were affected. So that was a shame too. Uh, but the reason I think that they chose to have the Beatle material on the first half is this. In 1975, they released Best Ofs from John Lennon and Ringo Starr. John Lennon's Shave Fish got up to number eight on the charts. It did okay, all right. Ringo's Blast From Your Past only got up to number 30 on the U.S. charts, and it failed to chart in the U.K. So that was a concern with them. So I think they kind of figured, you know what, George, when you think of George Harrison, what do you think of? I don't know. I think of something. I think of Here Comes the Sun While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Some of those standout Beatles songs. So they figured, you know what, we're going to market it. This is the best of George Harrison, okay, with the Beatles and without. So I think that's why they did that. It was kind of a sure thing, kind of a safe bet. The other thing, too, at this time that I think some of us might not know about or forget is with the Beatles solo going on to other labels, except for Paul McCartney, he stayed with them. They were continuing to market previously released material for the most part in packaging it as new albums. Okay, I'll give you some examples. And they were doing quite well. In 1973, uh, they released two double albums, Capital and EMI. Uh, the Red Album is known uh, as 1962 to 1966, that best of collection. That got up to number two on the Billboard charts here in the States. And the, the Blue Album, 1967 through 1970, got up to number one. All right? So then earlier in that year, in 1976, in fact, on June 7th, they released Rock and Roll Music. Rock and Roll Music was a double album of um, kind of more of the rockers from the Beatles. And that actually got up to number two on Billboard here in the States and number 11 on the UK album charts. Okay, And in fact, they had released a, a single for a song that was 10 years old. Got to Get You Into My Life from Revolver, and it got up to number seven on the top, you know, hits in Billboard here in the States. And then they released Helter Skelter in the UK, and that also did well. So my point is, 
they had a campaign to continue to market previously released material and uh, they were doing quite well so they looked at it that way too with this they would continue they would put out a live album live at the Hollywood Bowl the next year they would put out love songs and other you know uh, compilation and so forth so I think that's why they did what they did all right like it or not that's what they did I like it uh, if I was to review it uh, right now I would give it 8 out of 10 uh, would be my review on this album uh, guess it's missing stuff but I think it's a nice sample uh, it, it plays very well it flows very well I like how it, it flows from the Beatles songs to the solo and if you're not real familiar with the solo stuff it's a nice introduction so 8 out of 10 stars is what I would give it now I want to do something here kind of fun here at the tail end of this video uh, if I was to take off the seven songs from the Beatles and put solo on there what would I do now I'm getting this uh, I'm gonna give credit where credit is due I saw a video recently from Beatleman69. Uh, he is a YouTuber. He's a big fan of the Beatles and classic rock. Uh, I would encourage you to check out his videos. I have been subscribed to him for years and have always enjoyed his content on there, so I would check out his channel. But what he did is he did this. He put, um, you know, he decided, well, if the Beatles songs weren't on there, what songs could he round out this package from the first five years? So here's my list, okay? Uh, so the first song would be Isn't It a Pity, version one. This was a double A-sided single from 1970's All Things Must Pass. Uh, it was with My Sweet Lord, okay? Uh, Isn't It a Pity got to number one on the Canadian charts. So I think it definitely belongs on here. Uh, also, I would put song number two, All Things Must Pass. I just think it's a good standout track, uh, a fan favorite from, and my favorite, from uh, All Things Must Pass, 1970. So I would put that on there. All right, I'm going to cheat a little bit here <laughs> for song number three and four. Something Live, and Here Comes the Sun Live. The reason being, this was from a George Harrison project, uh, the concert for Bangladesh in 1971. Uh, so it's him solo, but he's doing Beatles songs, and I think they're good, so I would put them on there. All right, song number five is Don't Let Me Wait Too Long. This is from 1973's Living the Material World. This was actually going to be a single. Ringo Starr's on drums here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so I think that I would put it on there, too. Ding Dong Ding Dong, song number six. This was a New Year's celebration type song. Ring out the old, ring in the new, as George Harrison said. He was really excited about this single. He wanted this to be kind of... Uh, you know, a favorite that would be played every year. Uh, this single was released from Dark Horse in 1974. Uh, it uh, got up to number 36 on the U.S. charts and number 38 on uh, the U.K. And then finally to round out the collection, This Guitar Can't Keep From Crying. Uh, this was a song that did not do too well as a single and from Extra Texture's 1975 album, but either way, I think it's excellent. I love it. Uh, and um, I would definitely put it on there. So, what are your what are your thoughts on this? You know, do you think that uh, they did a good job by releasing the album like this, having it half Beatles, half solo? Do you think they should have just had a full solo album? Uh, what are your thoughts? And then also, what are some standout songs that you would put on there that maybe they didn't put on? All right, I'm curious to read your comments. Thank you very much for watching my video. You take care, okay? All right, bye.